Hi, Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now, today's video, we're going to make this cute and sweet heart shaped candy basket. It has striped colors on the side just to give it a little fun touch, and then this fun little edge. It's super cute and super easy to make. It's fun to fill with all sorts of goodies and candy. You could even use it for a candle holder. Just make sure that you have a dish or a glass container for your candle because you don't want this to burn because we are going to make this out of acrylic yarn. Now you can find this free crochet pattern on my blog and as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video in that description box. To make our heart shaped candy dish, you're going to need some yarn, of course, and we're going to be using Soft Essentials from Red Heart. It is a chunky or bulky number five weight yarn. All right, and we're going to be using these three colors. I'm going to do the main color, which is the bright pink on this one, in this ivory. And then I'm going to use the lavender and the teal for the stripes on the side of our bowl. Now, you don't have to do those in stripes. You could do this all in just one color if you want to. And this is a great project to make something super cute and fun and maybe use up some of your yarns in your chunky number five that you have on hand. You don't have to use traditional colors. You can use whatever colors that you want to because remember, hearts are not just for Valentine's Day. We're going to use our K hook today. That's a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need your scissors and then of course you'll need a needle just for weaving in those ends. Now the amount of yarn that you're going to need is about an ounce of your main color and a half ounce of your other two colors. So if you're doing it all in one color, you're going to need about two ounces of a chunky or bulky number five yarn. So we're starting with color one, which is our main color. We'll begin with our slip knot and chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. We're going to join this chain five into a circle. Now, if you prefer to do the magic circle here, you certainly can. We'll snug that down and tie our stay knot. All righty, we'll go in, pull up a loop and chain three. We're going to stitch three double crochets. One. two, and three. So our chain three counted as one and we stitched three more. So we have four double crochets. We're going to chain two and you'll notice I'm stitching over my tail of yarn and that's so when we finish this uh, row, row one, we can close up that hole in the center. All right, so now we're going to stitch four more double crochets. One, two, three, and four. Chain two, and then we'll do that one more time and stitch four double crochets. One, two, three, and four double crochets and chain two. So we have three sets of four double crochets with our chain two in between. We're going to join to the top of that chain three and now we're going to slip stitch in those next three stitches. One, two, three and then slip stitch in our chain two space. and we'll chain three. All right. 
Now we'll turn this over and we'll go ahead and pull that string and that will close the hole in the center of our little triangle. And we'll go ahead and just weave this in with our needle. Make sure you go through fibers and through stitches. And then we'll go ahead and clip that off. And that's done. We don't have to come back and weave that in. And so for row one, we have three sets of four double crochets with our chain twos in between. We slip stitch to the next chain two space and chain three. All right, let's do row two. Our chain three counts as one double crochet. And we're going to stitch four more double crochets in this same chain two space. One, two, three, and four. So our chain three counted as our first and we stitched four. So we have five double crochets in that chain two space. Now we're going to go over here where we have our first set of four double crochets and we're going to single crochet in between the second and third double crochet. Now we're going to come over to this next chain two space and stitch five double crochets. One, two, three, whoopsie, there we go, four, and five. So what we've done here is we've began forming the little humps of our heart. So now what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet in these next four double crochets. And this brings us to the bottom of our heart. And now we're going to form the bottom point. So we're going to stitch two double crochets, one, two, chain three, and two double crochets, one, two. And that forms the bottom of our heart, the point. All right, so now we're going to stitch in these next four stitches, and these are our slip stitches, so they might be a little bit snug, and we're going to stitch one single crochet in those four stitches. This is where we slip stitched to that first chain two space, and so they might be just a little bit snug. So we're just going to stitch one single crochet in those four stitches, and then we're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch. And this is the way that row two should look. We have five double crochets because we counted our chain three. We single crocheted in between the second and third double crochet if those of those four. We stitched five double crochets, four singles, two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets, and then four single crochets, and then joined to our chain three. Now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and of course we're starting row three. Our chain three counts as a double crochet. Then in the next three double crochets, we're going to stitch two double crochets, one and two. Then in that last double crochet, we're just going to stitch one double crochet. That brings us to our single crochet in the center, and we're going to stitch one single crochet right in that single crochet. There we go. Then that brings us to our five double crochets. 
we'll stitch one double crochet in the first double crochet and then two double crochets in the next three. One, two, one, two, and one, two. And then one double crochet in that next double crochet. All right, let's take a look at that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double crochets and eight double crochets. Now we're going to work down the side of our heart. We'll stitch a double crochet in each of those single crochets and those two double crochets. So we stitched a double crochet in those four single crochets and then in the two double crochets. That brings us to the chain three space and we're going to stitch two double crochets, one, two, and chain two, and then two more double crochets in that chain three space, one and two. And so that forms the point of our heart. Now we're going to stitch in those stitches, working back up the side, the two double crochets and the four single crochets. One double crochet in each of those stitches. Now we're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch. And this is how your heart should look at this point. It's a really nice heart and could be used as is for something else. Now we formed the bottom of our little basket. Now what we're going to do is start working up the sides of the basket. All right, so we're going to continue working. We're going to chain three and on row four, we're going to stitch in the back loops only. We have loops here and loops here. The loops that are facing you are your front loops. We're going to be stitching in these back loops. So we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of the back loops, working all the way around our heart. And this also includes that single crochet between the heart bumps. So we'll stitch one double crochet in each double crochet as well as that single crochet. And you'll know you're doing this correctly if you see this line of loops. That's what we didn't stitch in. And by stitching in the back loops, it's going to help our basket sit up and hold its shape just a little bit better. So I'm going to continue working all the way around my heart, stitching one double crochet in each of those stitches all the way around, working in the back loops only. I have stitched one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. I joined to my chain three, but I didn't chain three because I'm going to be changing colors here. If you want to do it all in one color, you don't have to change colors. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my color two, which is my teal color. I'm going to leave my color one attached, and that's because I'll be bringing it back in. All right, so I'm going to chain one. The chain one does not count as a stitch. It just brings you up where you need to be. We're not going to be stitching in the back loops anymore. That was only for row four. So we have that nice edge going around our basket. All right. So now for row five, we're going to be stitching one 
single crochet in each of the stitches around. And these are our striped rows. But again, you don't have to do them in stripes. I just like to because it adds a little extra color. And you can coordinate with whatever colors you're using to decorate. Because remember, hearts are not just for Valentine's Day. All right, so I'm going to stitch one single crochet in each of my stitches all the way around, and then I'll join back to my first single crochet. I completed row five with my first color of single crochet stripes, and we're going to join to the first single crochet. And this is really important because if you join with your slip stitch to the chain one, you'll accidentally add an extra stitch, all right? I'm going to leave my color one and color two attached, and I'm going to bring in my third color. And again, you don't have to bring in a third color. You can go back to color one and stripe it however you want to. All right, so I brought my color one in. I'm going to chain one, and again, chain one does not count as a stitch. It just gets us up where we need to be. So we want to make sure we go right in that first stitch and stitch a single crochet, and then we'll stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. Just like we did on row five. One single crochet in each of the single crochets around. And then again, we'll join back to that first single crochet. I completed row six with my lavender yarn, one single crochet in each single crochet around, and then I joined to my first single crochet. And so what you're gonna do for two more rows is you're going to repeat row five and row six one more time each. So you have two rows of teal and two rows of lavender. One single crochet and each single crochet around. Join to the first single crochet, change colors, or if you're not changing colors, you'll just repeat for two more rows. So what we want is a row of teal, a row of purple, and then another row of teal, and another row of purple, or whatever colors you're using. I completed those two additional rows of single crochets. Now I have some nice stripes there. I've cut off my yarn, and I will have a little bit of weaving in to do there, but because I went ahead and carried it from row to row, I only have four ends instead of eight to weave in. So I brought in my main color, and we're gonna do the trim. And it's a really simple trim. We're going to chain one, and then slip stitch in that first stitch. Then we'll chain one, and slip stitch in the next stitch. Chain one, and slip stitch. And slip stitch, you go in, pull up the loop, and then pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook, and chain one. Slip stitch, chain one. Slip stitch, chain one. And you'll notice I am doing just a little bit looser tension on this because for, in my opinion, it helps it lay a lot prettier on the top. So slip stitch and chain one. And see how it makes that pretty little sort of bumpy, ridgy edge? I really love that for this project. So slip stitch, chain one. There we go. <laughs> slip stitch, chain one all the way around the top edge of your basket. And remember, loosen your gauge or your tension up just a little bit and it will lay very pretty. So I've stitched that trim around the edge and one thing that you'll notice is it will, it will pull it out some and it'll look super pretty around the edge. Okay. On your last stitch here, you slip stitch, chain one. You're just going to go in and pull up a loop. We'll cut that yarn, and then we'll just go under that next loop and pull that loop 
to the inside because we want that edge to look nice and pretty. Alrighty, there we go. And we'll just tie that off. All right, now what we want to do is we want to weave in all these ends. When you change colors a lot, it's very important that when you're weaving in, you stay within that color because if I go down into the teal and blue and weave this in, some of this ivory color might show through. And so you want to be careful to go in the stitches and the fibers, but try to stay in that same stripe of color. So here is our finished little heart-shaped basket with the stripes on the side. I've weaved in the ends and if you change colors a lot you'll have a little weaving in to do but if you don't you can make this all in one color. I think it'd be beautiful in pastels to go with our Valentine candy. One thing I will tell you if you're going to fill this with candy even these I would take a coffee filter that's not been used yet and put it down in the bottom first and then put your candies in because that will keep your basket from getting yucky and sticky. All right, so if you're going to put chocolates or any kind of hard candy in there, I would put a coffee filter that's not been used yet down in the bottom to protect the bottom of your heart. Um, it's just something that I do. They're inexpensive. Of course, I drink a lot of coffee, so I have a bunch of them. But it will protect the bottom, like I said, of your basket since it is an acrylic and can get sticky. All right, so that's our little heart-shaped basket or candy dish or candy bowl, whatever you want to call it. It's a fun decoration. Mm -hmm.